what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be checking out the GMK Tech Nook Box 10. Now this is actually an interesting little mini PC that supports alt mode. It's also known as single cable operation mode at least by me and basically what we can do here is just connect this directly to a monitor that supports USB type C video in and PD quick charging out and we'll only need one cable to get this thing up and running. Makes a really nice little home office PC. You can actually mount this to the back of a monitor that supports USB Type-C and PD fast charging. With this one inside of the box, we're going to get our mounting bracket and hardware. Obviously, we've also got the Nook Box 10 mini PC and a 65 watt power supply. Kind of digging the color here. It is a bit brighter in real life than it is on camera. And, you know, it's not every day that you see these blue PCs, but when it comes to I.O., up front here, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, USB Type-C 3.1 Gen 2, and two full-size USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports. Over here on the right-hand side, we've got a micro SD card slot and a Kensington lock. And moving around back, this does support 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, so we've got that port. Two full-size HDMI ports, both 4K 60 out two USB 2.0 ports, and our power input. But remember, this can also be powered from that USB Type-C port up front. Given that this PC is so small and thin, I just wanted to take a look at the internals, and uh, they've actually did a pretty decent job with this heatsink, full copper with a blower style fan, and once I got the board out and turned it over, we do have dual channel RAM. Now that was one thing I was worried about, given the form factor of this thing, but uh, lo and behold, we've got two slots here. This has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz, and we've got a single M.2 drive. This will support PCIe 3.0 speeds. And when it comes to the specs, for the CPU, we've got that AMD Ryzen 5800U. The price on these 5800U models are coming down quite a bit now that we're getting some uh, mini PCs with Ryzen 6000. And to tell you the truth, the way prices are right now, if you're looking for an everyday mini PC, then getting a Ryzen 5000 system might be the way to go right now. 8 cores, 16 threads, we've got a boost clock up to 4.4 GHz, Radeon Vega 8 graphics up to 2000 MHz, this mini PC will support up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. We've got that 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. It also has Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, and we're running Windows 11. But by far, my favorite part about this PC is that single cable operation mode, known as Alt Mode. This Pixio monitor that I have here supports USB Type-C video in and 65 watt out, so we've got plenty of power for that 5800U. So basically what we've got going on here is power out from the monitor over USB Type-C and video into the monitor from the mini PC. We've also got a data connection and a lot of these monitors do have extra USB ports on them like this one here so we could actually plug in our mouse and keyboard directly to the display. And by the way, it will support 4K 60 over USB Type-C, but this monitor here is a 1440p unit. Still looks amazing and I've got it scaled up a bit so we can uh, see everything just a bit better. Overall, very snappy little system. A lot of these mini PCs kind of limit that TDP really low to keep it nice and cool, but this is actually at 35 watts out of the box. We've got a boost up to 42, constant 30, and we've got more than enough power for web browsing, email checking, 4K video playback. But I will tell you, once we start gaming on this, we will get a little bit of fan noise. I mean, we're working with a very small form factor here, so it does have to spin up a bit more to keep it cool. But under everyday normal use, it's pretty quiet. If this was sitting on the back of the monitor, I wouldn't hear it while I'm doing my everyday normal tasks. Web browsing really fast with that built-in Wi-Fi 6, but remember, if you needed a little more out of it, we've got 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. Loading up these pages is really nice. Let's head over to YouTube and check out some 4K video playback. We're going to go with uh, 4K60 here, and I think we're going to have a great time with 4K video playback. Uh, this 5800U running at 35 watts will do it just fine. We could actually do two streams, 4K60 if we wanted to, and we've got uh, actually three displays out. Obviously, USB Type-C up front, but we've also got those two HDMI ports around back. 4K60. Initial load in, had a few drop frames here. We're at seven drop frames, but uh, it's nice and steady now. So far, using it as an everyday normal PC is working out really well. Uh, it would replace a larger desktop if you just need it for your everyday use, like web browsing, email checking, document editing. You could definitely get some photo editing out of the way on this. I wouldn't go crazy, you know, if you're a professional, you obviously aren't going to choose something like this, but touching up your own photos or even editing your 1080p home videos is totally possible with the 5800U in the Nookbox 10. Next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks, and first on the list, we've got Geekbench 5. 
Single core, 1473, multi, 6744. Now this really isn't bad given that we're at that 30, 35 watt TDP here on a 5000 series APU. 6000 will net you much better single and multi. And with this chip at about 45 watts, I've actually seen it hit over 15 on single and close to 8,000 on multi. There is a little more that can be pushed out of this, but we're at that stock TDP. Checking out some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark from the bottom upwards. We've got Night Raid 16,306, Fire Strike 3,928, and Time Spy at 1526. Definitely on par with the other Vega 8 chips that we've tested, but obviously it doesn't have anything on new Ryzen 6000 with RDNA 2, but you can definitely pick these up for much cheaper right now. So far with these synthetics, it's not looking bad given that we're working with Ryzen 5000 with Vega graphics, but uh, let's get into some real world gaming and emulation to see what this thing can do. Okay, so first up we've got Marvel vs. Capcom, 1080p, medium settings, love testing out these fighting games on these Ryzen APUs, a lot of this stuff does work out really well. Afterburner is up in the top left hand corner, and as you can see our GPU clocks are at 2000 MHz, and the CPU is only pulling right under 8 watts, I mean not even 8 watts with this game at 1080p, medium settings. Doom Eternal, we're at 900p, and I do have that dynamic resolution going, that's really the way to go on these APUs low settings and we can run over 60 fps with it we can actually lock this at 60 if we want to but i usually set the dynamic resolutions target fps to around 63 so we don't drop under it here's the witcher 3 and i thought by now we'd get much better performance out of this game on these apus due to driver updates and game optimizations but that's really not the case we can get an average of 63 fps at 720p low Here's Cyberpunk 2077 720p low with FSR set to performance. We can get over 60 with it. Now we're not at medium settings like the Steam Deck's preset. We've got Vega graphics here so we really can't do those mediums. But at low this is very playable. Now it's time to check out some emulation and I've always had really good luck with these 5000 series APUs even the lower end ones like the 5300U. We've got PS2 here using PCSX2. Upscaled to 1080p, DirectX 11 back in, and we're getting a super steady 60 out of it. This will play most PS2 games at 1080p, some you might need to drop down to 720, and some you can even go up to 4K with it depending on the game. Moving up a bit to Wii U using the SimU emulator, Vulcan back in, Bayonetta 2, didn't drop under 60 like this. And if you take a look at Afterburner, we're still pulling under 8 watts with this here. I also tested Breath of the Wild, and that one is good for 1080p at 30 FPS, or 720 at 60. And the final one we have here is PS3, and going into this I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to run this game at full speed. This is one of those that loves those extra cores and threads, and especially higher clocks. But we're getting a steady 60 with Skate 3 here, pulling close to 10 watts from that APU. Aside from form factor, power consumption can also be a big concern for some people, so I always like to test it out on these minis. It's plugged into a kilowatt meter while I'm doing my testing. At idle, we're at 9 watts. Average gaming jumps up to 48 watts, and the maximum was 63. And this was actually not tested using alt mode, this was tested with the included 65 watt power supply. But if you are using this over alt mode, and you can supply up to 65 watts over USB Type-C, they're going to be right on par with each other. I also like to monitor CPU temps while I'm doing my testing, and at idle we're around 41 degrees Celsius, and it's really quiet while we're web browsing even 4K video playback. It jumps up to around 55 doing 4K. Hard to hear the unit, but when we get into gaming, it does spin up. It's got that blower style fan and not a lot of room to move that air around, so it does need to kind of get on up there to get the heat out. But average gaming, we're around 84 degrees Celsius, and while running Cinebench R23, we did hit 91, which is thermal throttle set from the BIOS. So in the end, really loving the form factor here. Kind of like this color scheme, given that we've got a blue mini PC. Alt mode is definitely a plus if you're going to use it this way, and I'd say mounting this to the back of your monitor with that single cable operation mode is definitely the way to go. You can just have it set up, so all you need to do is plug the monitor in itself. I know it's not Ryzen 6000 with RDNA 2, I mean that would have been really nice, but we're going to start to see a lot of these Ryzen 5000 series mini PCs come down in price, and you know if you're looking for something just as an everyday desktop, then this could definitely get you by. You don't need to fork out $800 for Ryzen 6000 right now. But in the end, it's always up to you. 
Now that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the GMK Tech Nook Box 10, I'll leave some links in the description. And I think there are some coupon codes floating around. If I can find them, I'll throw them down there also. If you've got any questions, let us know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.